Yo, what is going on, you munchers, munchlags? Today, we're taking a look at the ADP deck that doesn't play Zacian, and I think is personally the uh, the best way to play ADP Zacian, or not ADP Zacian, ADP right now, and that is the Moltres build of ADP. So I took this original build from Natalie Miller, uh, one of the best players in the game. So I'll leave their Twitter in the description below. Go ahead and give them a follow so you can check out, you know, whatever they come up with as far as, uh, as, far as the decks go. Anyways, the original build was theirs. I changed quite a few things. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe not that much. I changed a couple things around from what their original build was. So let's get into it. So it's ADP still. It's an ADP deck, um, but we don't play the stuff. We don't play the Zations. We don't play the Mouse so we can't turn one GX attack. So we're always using turn two Alter Creation most games. However, if we go up against like a Shadow Rider build, um, we have Moltres in here. And we basically only use Moltres. Uh, we don't really use the ADP GX attack. Sometimes we could, depending on the situation, but pretty much we just go exclusively with exclusively with Moltres. Uh, and we do play seven basic dark energy and four Viridian Force, keep the paths of the peaks out of play, and then also give us that out to discard those dark energy or find them to discard them with research, dead change, or quick ball. So because we really really want to aggressively get that dire flame wings online and cooking um then we also want to set up for that turn two gx attack so to get there we got four roar energy and then we got one metal and one water energy and with the four viridian forest um it's pretty easy to set up the turn two gx attack actually because we have like 10 outs to energy we got the four viridian forest and as long as we have one metal or water in the deck we can use that once and then hopefully find an aurora energy over two turns um and do that so we got four of those in there and it's pretty easy to set up a turn to gx attack and even if we would like whiff the adp turn one we can attach the metal or the water energy to whatever else we have in play and then e switch it off later because we do play three energy switch which is not only great to set up uh an unfortunate like whiff of the adp turn one to set up for a turn two gx attack but also uh get into attacking with mawile against the ice rider or even uh getting a zapdos v attacking when our opponent has few v pokemon in play if we can e-switch off the Moltres to the zapdos v and then we do play a one basic fighting or we could also attach the aurora to get the the fighting energy cost for the thunderous kick that's also great so we got the zapdos in here mainly for the turn just match up um it's not that great against other stuff and you really only need the uh the one one time against Eternatus to really to beat them so there was two Zapdos in the initial build from uh Natalie but I cut it down to cut it down to one um so yeah four Moltres two ADP you got the one Zapdos for our attackers Mawile so sometimes comes in clutch with the Wily Bite especially against Ice Rider and it's also got that Captivating Wink which is really good as well one more Shadow in here because more ounce to getting that Path to the Peak out of play can be a huge deal um, Got to keep the path to the peak out of the play. We're a very aggressive deck around Dedenne and Crobat, and that Dire Flame Wings is almost the biggest thing we're trying to keep online. Is the Dire Flame Wings? We want to be using that ability, accelerating those energy into play to set up the Aurora Burns um, without even having to potentially even Ultimate Ray. We just want to have these things ready to go as soon as possible. Uh, and then four quick, four cherish. Um, a great catcher some bosses orders of course we're still at the core of it in adp deck so we can still win with the great catcher boss the boss great catcher or the boss boss on two two prize pokemon offer our opponents back bench ultimate ray into aura burn or aura burn or a burn or you know uh, thunderous kick or a burn or thunderous kick uh wily bite whatever it might be we can still take that route um to win games really really quickly and aggressively uh for switch to air balloon for our our mobility cards and then we got the usual suspects three marnie four research in the draw supporter category there and that's basically the list i don't really have much else to say it's adp without station and i think it's better so let's go ahead get into some games and i'll show you guys what i'm talking about all right here we go getting into our first one so we do like to go first because we are setting up for like that turn to gx attack um thing we do need to find ooh, this hand is not i mean opening the denying just feels always really bad but we got the quick ball and we got one of our energies that we can put on the adp to set up for a turn two gx attack so we're already cruising uh so far we can quick ball away the dark energy aurora attach to the adp get rid of it doesn't really matter because i'm just going to research anyways and draw some new cards hopefully find a moltres like i said getting those dire flame wings off um every single turn ideally is pretty important to keeping up with our energy excel and play just in case we don't get the ultimate ray we want to be able to fall back on the Moltres. And it looks like our opponent has a really slow start here. ADP top deck is perfect. That means we can actually just go ahead and grab the Moltres here and secure that. Um, I did take note of the Zapdos being in the deck. However, it's not really that big of a deal unless we're up against Eternatus. And this doesn't look like an Eternatus deck because there's a Marsh Shadow on my opponent's active. But I guess you really never know, right? Uh, Dire Flame Wings and then Air Balloon active. And I think I'll just go ahead and... Pass over to my opponent. I don't want to put the ADP in the active. There's a couple situations in matchups where it's getting hit early, specifically up against Ice Rider. If they get to just pierce it for 40, that's actually a huge deal. 
um here comes that chaotic swell for my opponent our, our hand next turn is actually set up really well as long as we can find that energy and this chaotic swell could be some trouble for us uh because this does stop our access to viridian forest which is like a pretty big deal for us to have access to to be honest to find to set up for the gx attack because we have four viridian forest in the deck we only have one metal one water so viridian forest can be a big deal for helping us find our energy to set up for the turn two gx attack but we do play a marsh out of ourselves so it's possible we could get a viridian forest plus a way to bump this um not in this hand um, but we do have access to a dedene through this hand as long as there's a dedene in the deck quick ball and get rid of the horror energy so i feel like yeah, i was gonna say i have no idea I mewtwo makes sense and there it is there's the mewtwo uh from my opponent so we are up against a mewtwo box type deck i don't really know what to expect fully from my opponent but it shouldn't be too difficult um of a matchup like we should be able to beat this i think although house and trevnor are very, both very good against adp but with that consistent extra energy excel from the moltres i feel like we'll probably be fine um hopefully be fine we'll have to wait and see though we'll have to wait and see they've dead it changed uh they could house this turn right now which wouldn't be too annoying because i mean i guess we don't really have the <clears throat> anything to do on our turn we didn't get an extra dark in the discard pile if we had we could use the dire flame wings and there's the the gengar mimic so house is on the way for my opponent and uh yeah, nothing we can really do about it <laughs> here comes the house we'll see what we draw for turn uh it is a research so i think i'm just gonna pass with the Dene in the active because if i retreat to anything they ko it with poltergeist so i'm just gonna pass and be like all right I guess so so yeah unlike the zation build of adp we don't get the like intrepid sword there if we wanted to although in this situation we probably wouldn't want to because then we could easily get six trainer cards and then just kind of lose the game because of that so we wouldn't really want to anyways um but like it's something we can't do right we're just not playing we're not playing those cards so we can't really we don't even have the choice to use intrepid sword however we do have the consistent energy excel of the dire flame wings uh, and this build is like around what it wants to do. it's more consistent than the zation build as well now the zation build has more explosive potential through the metal saucer plays like i said you lose the uh, potential consistency of intrepid sword but i haven't really found this to be this build to be that much less consistent because we have the constant energy excel from dire flame wings i feel like i have to just dig less in general to have attackers set up um you know find the metal saucers or the e-switches or whatever to get it my attackers going because i just have the constant energy support from those dire flame wings like it just kind of works out fine I mean, now that they have the Gengar Mimikyu in play, we can look to go like KO this, KO Gengar Mimikyu. We'll see. Um, our opponents use their GX attack, so we don't have to be scared of that uh, Trevnor GX attack anymore. That's actually a huge top deck in the uh, Aurora energy. And I actually might... Do I want to put Mawile in play? Maybe I don't even want to put Mawile in play, though, because that might give him a target, actually, to take a knockout on with the Vile Plume. Yeah. I guess I don't want to put Mawile. I, like, want to, but I also just shouldn't, so I'm just not going to um get rid of this <clears throat> and then i'm gonna go i could hold the great catcher here actually to be honest um, but i kind of want to be a little bit more aggressive with the research and draw cards so i'm gonna bring up the gengar mimic you here try and trap it i also like want to get off a of dire flame wings if i can so we're gonna try and get off that we are able to like i mentioned that combo of you know marsh shadow here comes a viridian force viridian force away and energy and then we get to use the dire flame wings for the turn and we'll grab this water energy leave the metal in there because the metal can possibly be used for that um oops i almost clicked done alter creation um okay, the metal can possibly be used for <clears throat> maybe i should have actually even left the 80 second adp around we maybe would want to use second adp in this game actually to be honest because my hand is a little bit I, mean, I don't know where they're gonna go from here trevnor is like what i'm thinking they're gonna want to do here but it's possible they don't trevnor um they do trevnor they could take away my boss then i i lose that which is not good because that's like my out to like boss to dene this turn knock that out and then we need another boss on the gengar mimic to close out the game yeah we definitely want to not lose the boss but they also need to have the gengar and Mim or the trevnor so they need to go find it they do play a lot of outs so that kind of like four cherish ball four quick ball and sometimes some tag calls as well so it shouldn't really be a problem for them to find it to be honest um but we'll see comes a quick ball so if they've got it they can grab it right now uh, and i also gave them for the enforced yeah there's the trevnor so we have to deal with trevnor now which is not good i don't like dealing with trevnor here um but if we keep the boss then we just kind of have the boss play and we can kind of go from there and hope for the best to be honest i think that's what we're gonna like look at doing here is just boss the dene and hit it um and also you know what, to be honest i don't know if they have a way to one hit ko a moltres i don't think they do um they might here comes a marnie so that's gonna be a little bit disruptive we're gonna have to see what we draw off this we had the boss we had the energy now we're losing it all 
So we need energy. We need boss. Got a Marnie. We have the Cherish Ball. So second to Dene is in the deck, which I think it is. We can go for a Dede change. Um, and I'm sure they'll more shadow away the Viridian Force here because there's no reason to really leave it in play for me. But yeah, we actually kind of need Dedene to be in the deck here. I could go Ultimate right, hit the active. But then we kind of walk into... Uh, I mean, I guess that would probably work, to be honest. That would set up the two-hit KO. Even Mal and Lana wouldn't save them. They don't have access to their GX attack anymore for the Miraculous Duo. The one play that they could still have, though, if I hit their active, is that tag switch switch play and just go into a fresh Mewtwo. And then even if I KO this one, this one can still take a knockout on the following turn. And then I kind of just lose the prize trade from there. Um, oh, they have Incineroar. That's actually going to be super good here for my opponent. They can actually Incineroar away one of my Aurora energies. Now, this does mean... I can just go find E-Switch. However, it means it's going to be that much harder for me to pull off the boss play this turn. Um, so we'll see if they do the Incineroar play. They have the Incineroar now. I mean, they got the Trevnor initially, so that's making me think what, they were, what their play was. But they quickballed for the Trevnor. They can't quickball for Incineroar. So now that they have access to Incineroar, let's see if they go with that play instead and take away my Aurora energy, which I kind of like a little bit more. But also, Trevnor is also just so good here. But you have to go with the Crushing Punch. So now, for me to, like, take a knockout this turn, it's so much harder. A knockout on a Dedenne, it's so much harder um, than last, than before. We have the Dedenne, though. So we're going to go for this, I think. Uh, just Dedenne change and see what we get. We need E-Switch. We need a Metal or a Water. We got the Metal. No E-Switch, though. Yeah, we got the Boss, too. So, and we're down quite a few Switch cards now. So now, it just gets kind of awkward. We're gonna have to go for like a hit on the active, I think, here. Um, attach active. Bench a second Moltres. I could have switched into the... Actually, you know what I could have done? I could have switched into the Moltres and then plan to use Moltres this turn. That's what I probably should have done, right? I probably should have switched into Moltres and just plan to use Moltres this turn. So my bad on that one. Mistake from me. Switch into Moltres. Plan to try and just try and find boss off the dead age change. Use Moltres. And go from there so now we have to try and get a switch card or an e-switch up to the adp got the e-switch so we can go with ultimate ray i guess um i mean we don't really have a choice it's kind of what we have to just go with <laughs> mawile here a little bit more uh attractive of a i'm gonna go with it here get their eldegoss out of their hand that's a good hit right there e-switch from here to here and then we get to use that ultimate ray and who knows maybe we can pull this off here Get all these cards out of the deck. Go. We have one dark in here, I believe. So we can go like dark, dark, and then water to the Mawile, I guess. Have both Maltrace be able to attack and the Mawile be able to attack. And we know they're handed switch, switch, research, research. I forget what the last card is, but it's a lot of junk. So this is possible. It's possible for us to win from here for sure now because my opponent only has this one attacker set up. Now, if they had the Eldegoss, I don't know if, I think if the Eldegoss would add that much more to their turn, to be honest. They could have bossed for a turn, I guess. And they do have this other Mewtwo getting set up here. So they can have, they will have access to Poltergeist with this Mewtwo. But they'll, unless, they, if they don't get the easy tag switch, tag switch, not easy, if they don't get the tag switch, they might not even play the tag switch, to be honest. Um, if they do play the tag switch, they could go like switch tag switch. It's just going to be a night watch for my opponent for the knockout. And we're going to try and burn all of the trainer cards that we possibly can out of our hand. Out of our hand. But I do want to keep the boss around. So that makes things a little bit awkward. We know they can't night watch next turn so i guess i could quick ball away the boss to grab my eldegoss and then knockouts oh we are taking a lot of damage from the horror energy as well actually no they will be able to use vile plumes attack to knock us out oh so maybe we do lose this on the next turn actually now if i had ultimate right to my second adp we would have had a shot so keeping around my second adp was probably correct i'm always a little bit too aggressive with discarding it and then we get punished in the end so do we even really have an out to win this game besides hope they don't have energy? This makes you think that they definitely have an energy in their hand. If I attack with uh, Mawile, yeah, the Vile Plume will always get them there, I think. There's nothing I can do about it at this point. Um, so I should keep second ADP around. I'm always super aggressive to discard the second ADP, and then it pretty much always comes back to bite me, to be honest. <clears throat> I just hope they don't have energy as like our out here. Um... Catch here, quick ball away. Uh, boss, <laughs> just in case they click Poltergeist, I guess, and we can grab Eldegoss and then E switch from me here to here. Actually, I maybe should have left that there to be honest. And then burn, but yeah, if they have an energy, they just get to use because we're gonna take 50 damage here from the horror energy. If there was no horror energy there, we would have survived. But there is, so we can't do anything about that. 
Um, but yeah, if I had ultimate right to second ADP and then we switch into the second ADP and use ultimate right there again, we might have survived. We might have survived. Uh, if they don't have boss this turn, which we took away their Eldegoss, and if they don't have a boss in hand, I'm sure they would have researched last turn to try and find the boss to go like um, boss plus the uh, the Bioplume attack on my Dedene. But if they don't get it, then we have a chance here. But it looks like I'm going to lose this one. Uh, I mean, Mewtwo matchups are pretty usually pretty tough for ADP, but I definitely could have kept my second ADP around. Could have kept that around. I also could have gone with that switch play like I mentioned. I could have switched into my Moltres. That way when I dead change, all I have to do is find boss. And I did find the boss. Then we could have just gone knockout and then knockout. And we theoretically could have won the game first. So a couple of missteps on my part lead to the loss or kind of seal my fate. Didn't give myself the best chance, but uh, did some learning. Apply to our next game. All right, here we go again. Once again, opening one of our support Pokemon, which is, of course, not great. Uh, we do have a decent amount of like attackers that we could open as well. <clears throat> but opening one of our support Pokemon, we got the Quick Ball, we got the Energy, which is all that really matters. We're up against the Mirror Match, which um, there's no real advantage for us going second in the Mirror like there usually is when you play the E-Switches, because then you can get off the Turn 1 GX attack and kind of be fine. So we're kind of just behind here, unless they whiff the Turn 1 attachment, which would be great, but it doesn't happen that often. So... We're just going to be overall behind in this uh, in this matchup here. Yeah, because a quick ball, going to grab themselves an ADP, attached to it. I'm uh, going for the Zacian. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, hope here. Uh, Dark Energy active as well. There's the Metal Saucer, so they can still pull off the GX attack next turn. But this is definitely this is definitely the kind of start we're hoping that our opponent has, to be honest. Um, oof, and they hit the Intrepid Sword. That's kind of annoying. All right, let's see what we get off the top. It is an Aurora Energy. I think I'm going to quick ball away the e switch here okay go with it grab the adp then maybe just attach and pass just attach the aurora catch the aurora discard the marnie just pass to my opponent i don't really need to be more aggressive than this like this is fine and then we have the attach and i also have the great catcher in hand which could be one of our one of the tools we could utilize to try and help us get back into it a little bit because we definitely are behind like i mentioned um because our opponents will be utilizing that uh trying to utilize the jake's attack of adp next turn most definitely they could brave blade knock on my eldegoss which i guess would also be fine at this point uh, but if they have to bench to Dene to try and set everything up and get everything going, we can like Great Catcher to Dene, attach, you know, get the switch, switch, uh, GX attack, and then kind of hope they can't move the Dene. Because now all of a sudden, not to ultimate right next turn, they not only need, you know, the energy on the ADP, they also need to get into the active, which could be, uh, they might just not be able to pull off. So we kind of hope for that. Here comes the research. They need the water energy. They need the E-switch. Don't have either of those yet. Um, and if they have to Dene change for it, like I said, if they have to go to Dene to try and find it, that could be our opening to potentially get ahead. So I like keeping the Great Catcher here. We can go attach water, Great Catcher away the Aurora plus the top deck. Unless our top deck is a switch card, then I kind of don't want to do that, but hopefully it's not. Um, and they give us a Verdian Force here as well. So now we can actually get a Dark Energy in our discard pile, which is great. Um, they're setting up one of their own as well. Um, but let's see if they just go with the Intrepid Sword here, because if they do, huge opening for us to potentially get back into this game, because we're currently behind, definitely behind here. And there's the Intrepid Sword. So no E-Switch. Um, yeah, we are, uh, we're back in this one. ADP top deck. So no great catcher target, so we're not doing that anymore. Um, I guess I'd rather have the water there because I can E-switch it. But yeah, I'm going to go Verdian Forest away. I talked about how keeping second ADP around can be a huge deal. And I feel like this is one of those matchups where it could be. So I might bench second ADP here. Sort of like this Aurora. I'm going to grab this dark energy. I'm going to attach the water energy, and then I'm going to play the research. Um... Uh, we could bench the, it just doesn't get one hit KO'd, which is just really nice. So, but it could get stuck in the act. Uh, I'm just kind of torn on this. Let's go ahead and bench it. Second ADP, why not? It might make the difference later on. Switch card, no switch card. That is most unfortunate. Even if we had just got a Moltres here, we could have E-switched up to the Eldegoss to retreat it. Looks like we're going to have to be the ones that Dede change here, which is something you never want to do against ADP, is you don't want to be the one that Dede changes, but we really want to GX attack this turn, so I think we kind of have to Dede change this turn, because there's no way my opponent whiffs on their next turn, so yeah, got to be the aggressor here. I don't love it, but uh, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. All right, GX attack. Now, our opponent doesn't have any Dede Crobat or Eligos on their bench, so can't do anything to like abuse that factor now the second adp in play is kind of going to be useless because i did get rid of my metal energy 
uh on that discard there so there's not going to be like anything to uh there's no way to be there's gonna be no way to attack with this unless i get double aurora which i can't even do because i actually have two auroras in my discard as pile as well so i literally just can't attack with this adp at all it's impossible to attack with which isn't good we put it in play for like the reason the purpose of trying to attack with it and now we just can't attack with it it's not what we wanted to do at all <laughs> it's just not what we wanted to do so this turn i'm actually not too sure what i want to do i kind of want to like go boss knock out the zation with the moltres um then they can go moltres knock out my moltres but then i can actually respond with moltres knock out their moltres by going uh dire flame wings attach a dark energy and then also e-switch this water off so if we can get attachment for turn to the moltres uh get a dark out of the discard pile, which we already have set up in there and boss i think that's just the route to take here because otherwise i feel like we're just going to be losing so we got to be aggressive here uh and hope for the best one of those situations here so we got I mean, plenty of switch cards energy so i'd probably search out the i don't think the fighting energy is ever going to be that good on the zapdos it could be though because they have so many v's in play actually we could go fighting to zapdos and if they do 30 to themselves we actually do enough to knock it out so i think we actually want to leave the fighting energy in the deck i'll go for reinforced away for reinforce i'm gonna go ahead and grab myself one of the dark energies instead then and yeah we're hoping for switch boss here uh, and if not, we're hoping for E-Switch. I guess I could have, like, left this in the deck and maybe just Ultimate Raid, actually, to be honest. Uh, we got the boss. No Switch, though. So I could have, like, not attached yet, I guess. Yeah, I could have, like, not attached. Because now we just don't do anything for our turn, which is worse than the alternative, which was something. And I don't want to use two boss here. So I think we're just going to have to go ahead and pass and just hope our opponent whiffs. Um, but if we ultimate raid into this and then they still have, like, the boss attached, we're probably going to lose anyways the boss boss. So, yeah, I could have, like, not attached yet. I could just not use Viridian Forest there. Play the Dead A change. Seeing what we had drawn. And once we draw into a hand like this, we just go, okay, I guess we'll just settle for Ultimate Ray then. And then just go, you know, attach the Aurora active or whatever. Uh, use the Dire Flame Wings and then Ultimate Ray the active. Because if they don't have boss here, then that's how we could actually win the game. Now, I put myself in a spot where it's going to get a little bit weird. Um, and if they don't have boss, then I could have won that round. So I should have just waited I was a little bit aggressive there thinking it's my only out to win, which it really wasn't, although it did seem like it was, especially in the ADP mirror, it always seems like that, where it's like, it's like I don't really have a choice besides that kind of play when my opponent pulls off their kind of play. So, but we did have a, we did have a choice there. Did not take the optimal round, but who knows? Maybe we can still pull out the dub here. We're going to have to get a little bit lucky, but I think it is still possible if they hit our active, but here comes the dead a change. So they're looking for that boss play. Let's see if they can find it. They don't have it yet. But I'm sure they have quite a few boss left in their deck. And um, can probably go for it. Uh, and if they actually Ultimate Ray are active now, they do have Dedenne on the bench. The Dedenne is in play, which they could have avoided. So now we have a pretty clear boss-boss route here. Uh, but there's the boss on my Moltres. And they're going to knock out my Moltres with their Moltres. So this is basically where we lose the game, to be honest. And this is kind of the ADP mirror. Like, nothing's really changed. They're playing the Zacian builds. We're not... Um, still ADP mirror things. Um, so I could have had damage here on their ADP, but the way it's playing out, it looks like it probably wouldn't matter. Oh, but they're going with... Oh, okay. <laughs> they, like, did a bunch of stuff. They ended up with the Zacian back in their active. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's impossible for us to win now. No, that's not true. That's not true. We can still ultimate Ray and then hope my opponent does not have another boss. There's still hope. I'm like, this is basically over, and it is basically over. The chance of them not having another boss, I think, is pretty low. Um, we have a lot of boss. <laughs> um, get thin out the deck a little bit more, I guess. Probably not. We just needed a boss for sure. So attach here. Discard the research. Bench the Moltres. Yeah, bench the Moltres. Use that Dire Flame Wings. Uh, we don't have any bench spaces to work with, so now I can, like, pretty enforce away that. I guess I'm going to ultimate raid these out of the deck anyways. Um... Well, I kind of want to make sure I don't get... Well, no, if they have boss, they just win. So I can just... I can hold on to one, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter if I hold on to one. So I can, like, leave these in the deck. And then, yeah. Boss, the Dedene. Ultimate Ray. And then hope my opponent does not have a boss. Which is, like I said, unlikely. Um, Dark Energy here. And then, I don't know. Dark Energy uh, to the ADP. Have that thing, I guess. Be able to retreat with an air balloon. But they, they should just have the win here put one on the Eldegoss as well. So I can e-switch over there and use Float Up. Why not? Um, but yeah, my opponent probably has a boss here. They need the Goss, a Quick Ball, a boss. A whole bunch of things they could have. So 
not looking good for us. I guess the Goss is gone, but they still probably have, you know, a great catcher and three boss left. So likely, and there it is, the boss. So nothing we can do about it. It's the ADP mirror. ADP usually wins uh, eventually. Rarely does ADP not win in the ADP mirror. And there it is. So another defeat, but still a solid game. And, uh, you know, I still think showing off the deck pretty well. Let's get into another one. All right, getting into another one. We're going first this time. So definitely what we want to go. We want to go first. And we got the ADP start. But we don't want to leave ADP interactive. Because depending on the matchup, there's a lot of matchups where that early hit they can just get into the ADP <clears throat> can be pretty detrimental. So we're going to start with it on the bench. Looks like we're up against a single strike deck. So probably wouldn't have been a problem against a single strike deck. But better safe than sorry. Uh, and yeah, the opening hand, really nice. Really, really nice. Uh, get the metal to the ADP. Uh, quick vault would be great. I would like to get this Dark or Viridian Forest, but we don't hit it. So I think I'm just going to chill. We have the Switch card already. Uh, and then we can research next turn to get the Dark into the discard pile. And that sounds fine to me. So we're up against the Tornadus VMAX, which to be honest, I got no idea how this matchup is going to go. I would actually have to assume, or I'm going to assume, is probably an unfavorable matchup, though, without <laughs> Zation and Rusted Sword. If we have Zation and Rusted Sword, then the damage they'll take from the Houndooms might be enough to the point where... We get the knockout on it. Uh, but even then, I'm not even 100% sure, to be honest. Uh, very cu curious to see how it goes for them, though. This is a deck that I've been wanting to work on that I haven't, you know, picked up yet is the Tornadus VMAX deck. Because I think there is some potential there. How much potential remains to be seen. But I think there definitely is some potential there. Here comes a Marnie. Um, another reason, like, using Daddy Change here or something. Just get dark in the discard pile. And we, we lose the Switch card. We lose two Cherish Balls. Just chill. See what we get. Well, this is not very good at all. So we're really hoping for a top deck now. And uh, even just like an air balloon or a switch card would be fine. Because then we get to, you know, Verdian Forest. We get the Dark Energy in the discard pile. Uh, another Hound Hour from my opponent. Are they going to go all out and bench for Hound Hour? No. <laughs> okay, they're going to go with the Tower of Darkness. Draw some cards. That would have been like a little bit aggressive, I think. Probably over bench. Just a, just a tad. All right, we draw into a boss. All right. Well, it's going to be a rough one, I guess. Go ahead and grab the water energy. And probably just have to go with boss up a hound hour and pass uh, to try and buy some time. Because, I mean, yeah, as you can see, my hand kind of stinks. Uh, <laughs> it's not good. No switch card, no out to draw support. So we're going to have to settle for playing a little bit slower. Here comes the air balloon. And we really need them to whiff the knockout here. If they get this knockout, I think we're going to be in pretty big trouble. Um, but maybe they have a little bit of a slow start themselves or a slow turn too, like us. And uh, that gives us some time to get back into the game. But so far, I mean, the Houndoom's out. Um, another capture energy coming down. So Tor Tornadus V number two on the way, I would assume. Yep, Tornadus V number two is out and about. Um, another cool thing about that, like, it can play capture energy super well. Capture energy is an insanely powerful card that uh, can just be really hard to utilize because uh it's not a type of energy which is like the biggest thing it doesn't require it doesn't like uh fill up a type so it can be really really hard to utilize <clears throat> because of that but in this deck tornadoes only needs colorless energy so it works out really really well in this uh in this deck which is always cool to see because i think i mean it's like one of the most powerful if not one of if not the most powerful energy in the game maybe not the most powerful it's really good though it's really good rapid strike energy i mean single strike energy is good too but yeah really really strong so it's really cool to see it when it does get does get some value and get some use blow through okay so my opponent not a super aggressive turn two well i definitely want to go yeah we just want to go like this reinforce away this grab myself another dark attach retreat now the thing is i could boss but then i can't top deck quick ball so i'm kind of in dilemma here on this but i don't want my adp to get knocked out so i kind of want to boss this thing because it's two retreat cost i think possible it gets stuck although it could blow through would be annoying so i could bring up a hound doom or a hound tower but that only has one retreat cost so i think this thing a little bit better to bring up we'll see how this goes i mean once again my hand is so yeah now we now if we top that quick ball we can't use it um but if i leave this in the active and it becomes a vmax it's gonna knock out my adp so i think that's a little bit worse overall if i had to pick between the two bad things to happen i think i would pick my adp getting knocked out versus you know potentially top decking the quick ball so 
and they had a pretty slow turn last turn as well so it's very possible that continues uh and my opponent doesn't have a great turn this turn either um so what we'll, we'll, we'll kind of have to wait and see what it is and if Redeem Sword Forest sticks in play we can at the very least ultimate ray which sends out the deck um of course I would want to try and hold on to my top card because then it makes quick ball live of course if my top card is a quick ball it'd be kind of sad but I mean it happens sometimes uh so this Eternatus is set up ready to go but it has only 170 HP left so if we can get boss here and knock this thing out uh that would put us in a pretty good spot I would think attach the active and here comes their quick ball so I assume uh to Denny or Crobat and there's the Crobat is on the way Oh, but they're looking for that switch card or they could get another houndoom and like energy here retreats and this attack is doing 120 so i'm not really scared of the blasting hammer they need the v max there's a bird keeper actually do they have the v max to go with it is the question if they do i'm in trouble uh, we could actually still the theoretically win this one though because they do have two uh two two prizes on the bench so if we top deck cherish ball or Dedede, could go roar burn and knock out the tornadoes v into like mawile or something knock out the crobat or something like that or even zapdos so is this still winnable on a top deck of cherish ball dene crobat research wouldn't quite cut it or marnie because we do really need to get around the thing this thing this turn we can't really afford to attack into it that's an aurora energy so that means we lose so another loss here because a pretty bad start um but that happens sometimes you get marnied into double boss double verdian forest and you just kind of have to lose those games all right here we go again so we've taken some rough l's um but some of them the first two were a couple a little bit close and a lot of people ask me why i like even keep like the game that i had the last game i had against the tornadoes v max people ask me why do i keep that gameplay in the video because i think it's still a pretty a pretty educational gameplay to watch because you know you go through the motions of dead drawing and a lot of people don't properly tackle the things to do in those kind of dead draw situations and sure we kind of didn't draw out of it but sometimes you do and if you don't properly play through the scenarios um you would decrease your chances of being able to you know draw out of them and then give yourself put yourself in a good enough spot to be able to win the game if you do draw out of it so i still like keeping those kind of uh those kind of games in the video because it showcases you know what to do when you are dead drawing you know um because you can win those kind of games if you all of a sudden do make that top deck so you know playing it properly you know if i you know do the boss plays and i trap stuff and they get stuck in the active for a couple turns all of a sudden and then i top deck then we're right back in the game right so but if you don't go out of your way to like boss up the right thing um you put yourself in like a worse spot overall right so there's still like a correct way to go about it and look at it and plan around it and all that kind of shenanigans to uh to give yourself the best best shot to win those type of games which uh it's definitely worth uh worth knowing how to play in those scenarios for sure okay we're up against Sincino urshifu i haven't played against this deck in a long time uh i feel like it's kind of dropped off the face of the earth um with rotation i doubt they play stadiums i don't really want to give them verdian force but i know i kind of need verdian forest i actually want to set up the bench mole trace theoretically so i'm gonna grab the adp and then i'm gonna marnie because one of the pro struggles problems whatever you want to call it with this deck is it can just struggle against uh it can struggle to just find what it needs early on you know the stonox is great but if i reduce our hand size down here and then don't draw what i want to draw uh <laughs> um you know it can get tough for them so we got the brilliant forest here gonna go ahead and grab ourselves a the water because the metal can be used on the mawile and i don't really want a dead change or crowbat here i would love to pull off that dire flame wings but i think we're gonna be okay and just go like this um yeah using this marnie here could be huge right because it resets that seven card hand this deck can struggle setting up early on so that, that those plus three cards they could have could be a huge deal it looks like they're doing just fine who knows maybe they don't attack this turn because i made that play and chose to marnie over research because um, we needed so little that turn um and we really had it all in the hand right we had the adp on the bench we had the verdian forest we would have loved to get on off a dire flame wings but uh it didn't happen not that big of a deal um my opponent with the marnie now now we're probably gonna have to dedicate something and i actually really hate losing the mawile here to be honest because the mawile is super good in this matchup to try and force a urshifu v onto the bench um we love to try and get the urshifu v onto the bench um but it looks like it's probably not gonna happen in this game so that stinks for us but uh, i mean, can't have it all and there goes a goon ping onto my oh they actually whiffed the attack here so that's great for us that is good for us and ideally it's eh, a great catcher Although it is harder to move to Dene than the Sonos. I guess they could capture energy retreat this, so we need a scoop of net or the air balloon for the goon. So it's actually probably easier to move to Dene for them. Um, see, I'm losing my Mawile, which is 
It's not the end of the world. I don't like it. <laughs> we don't play Echoing Horn, so we can't do that against my opponent um, at all. We can't Echoing Horn. Like, we can't KO today, Echoing Horn it. Uh, but definitely something to consider adding to the uh, to the build, to be honest. Um, I could have actually gone Great Catcher plus Crobat. I think I'm just going to go with the Dedenna here. I could have gone Crobat, actually, though, and I would have been able to keep my, my Mawile around. So I could have actually maybe done it like that, and that might have been the, the better way to uh, tackle this situation. All right, do this retreat. Um, and I could hit that Marnie this turn. Go, I could go Goss for Marnie. I don't hate it. I kind of like it because, once again, like, like I said, my opponent, they can just struggle to find stuff sometimes. Let's do it. Goss for Marnie, disrupt the hand again. Is it going to make a difference? I don't know. Would I do this again the next time I play this matchup? I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> but we're doing it right here, right now. We're going to see if it makes a difference. Because uh, I really do feel like we want to be pretty disruptive in this matchup. In the early turns with these Marnies, if we can, sets ourselves up best, hopefully, for those those later turns. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe it won't make a difference at all. I don't kind of regret it. But um, who knows? Maybe they whiff the Switch card now, right? Like I said they don't play a ton of draw supporters. Um, I mean, they play like the, the Bird Keepers, the Marnies, but they don't play like the Researchers. You know, they're not drawing a ton of cards every turn. They have to make dues to work with as well, but we're hoping that maybe they whiff the Switch card here. That'd be huge if they did whiff the Switch card here. We get that first knockout. Eh, but there's the Bird Keeper into the Urshifu VMAX. Now, I have to decide what do I want to ultimate right here. Do I want to ultimate right into this Urshifu VMAX? Um, they have the Cheryl in the discard pile. So if I do hit the Urshifu VMAX, they can do a play where they like, you know, make a bench space, put Mewtwo down, put Cheryl on top. Uh, Air Balloon, Retreat, or even Hard Retreat. And they might just go with a, uh, a G-Max Rapid Flow to set up for that play a little bit better this turn. Um, so I think I want to try and find a boss here. Take out a Cincino. You know, Ultimate Ray, take out that. And then Boss, Ultimate Ray, take out another Cincino. Uh, and then kind of <laughs> maybe Boss, Ultimate Ray, take out the Dedenne or something at the end of the game. Uh, they create themselves a bench space here. So we'll see what they do. Uh, if they bench another Urshifu, we definitely want to try and KO that Urshifu. That is our that is going to be our, our priority, our target, is to KO the Urshifu. 100%. Uh, we're going to try and knock it out with that Aura Burn. Um, because that gives us a huge opportunity to win this game. To get the Aura Burn knockout on that Urshifu. Which means that we can just ultimate right KO the Dedenne or Aura Burn knockout the Dedenne on the following turn. So we'll see what they do with this bench space. And this is why I like wanted to keep them all while around. Because... Uh, if they, like, you know, take a knockout on a turn and leave themselves with a bench space open, then we can go, like, Mawile, force down an Urshifu V after we've KO'd Dedenne with Ultimate Ray, and then go boss again with Moltres to KO the Urshifu V. Uh, give ourselves, like, that option, I guess. Uh, and there's the Urshifu, so I think we're just going to kind of go all out for this KO on this Urshifu. Um, I don't see a reason not to, to be honest, so I think we're just going to go for it. Go all out for the KO on the Urshifu. Will we get it? Who knows? We're going to try and get it. So I'm basically just going to go ahead and go grab the Dene immediately and Dene change. I'm kind of regretting putting the second Moltres in play, to be honest. I had it in there initially. I put it in play because I was like, well, if they knock out that Moltres or hit it, I'm going to want a fresh Moltres to work with. So, um, But yeah, we want to go after that Urshifu pretty aggressively, like I mentioned. Um, grab this. Grab a Dark Energy. Four Switch. Three Boss. I mean, the odds aren't too ridiculously good, but I, I just feel like it is the correct way to go about it here. Get rid of the Dark Energy. Grab that to Dene. I really don't want to attach this energy yet because I want the option of Ultimate Ray still. Man. An Ultimate Ray plus Marnie wouldn't be terrible here. So I think I'm going to hold off on attaching. But then I could whiff the energy. That's what I'm thinking now in my head. Is I could whiff the energy and then that would be terrible. And then, man. Uh, so we can attach here. I wouldn't really do anything. I think we're just going to go ahead and Dene change and go for it. See what we draw. Leave the option of both open. Because ultimate right here still isn't terrible. Especially if we combo it with a Marnie. And there's the Marnie plus ultimate ray. So I think that is what we're going to go for here. Is Marnie plus ultimate ray. Um, go ahead throw this down. Get rid of this. And then yeah, Marnie plus ultimate ray is going to be the move. Because we didn't get the... We got the boss. We didn't get the switch card. We weren't able to move to the bench there. Found some switches now, but a little bit late. So we're going to have to settle for this ultimate ray into the VMAX. Um... Flame Wings, and hope that the Cheryl play kind of doesn't happen, to be honest, because the Cheryl play would be huge if my opponent can pull it off. And right now, they don't have even a, a G-Max Rapid Flow available to them as well, so I'm not, like, that scared of that either. I don't need to be that scared of that, because it just kind of can't happen. Um, so we're going to load up Double Moltres here, and then, uh, I mean, we'll just kind of see what happens. We have no boss in hand as well. That's also another big takeaway, I think, here right now, is no boss in the hand. 
and we only have access to cherish balls no quick balls so we can't get crowbat to draw more cards if they can knock out this turn so um we'll see we'll see but we throw out the marty again like i said this deck can sometimes struggle to just find what it needs i mean they're they're pretty set up now and i've gone through quite a bit of their deck so they're not really in that stage anymore of uh the whiffing i feel like the early turns is when the marnies can hit hit the sincino or shifu super hard but the later we get into like these stages of the game it doesn't quite feel like it has as big of an impact to be honest and there's the bird keeper there's the v max uh do they find the energy and they find the energy so in a pretty tough spot now looking like they have the the the, the advantage they're they're ahead for sure here um and there's not too much we can do about it they got the the gale thrust they knock out my adp and then they're just an energy plus a boss away from going knockout to denate knock out my eldegoss with the g max rapid flow so not looking good for us we're still gonna try we're gonna try our best here i'm gonna play the marnie uh we could try and get zapdos set up they do have two v's in play so if we can find zapdos fighting energy a uh, plus an e-switch we could make something work here where we remove this energy from play and maybe are able to kind of squeak out a dub that way um so we got that going that's like a, there's like some potential there for a play like that we'll see zapdos e-switches and the basic fighting are in there so it's all there i'm just gonna burn these two cherish balls we don't want them in the deck anymore so if i marnie i put them back in the deck we don't want that so can we get the zapdos can we get an e-switch got the e-switch no zapdos and we got the aurora um we could have found this with that as well but man <clears throat> not looking good we could float up so our opponent couldn't win next turn i guess <laughs> i get i say i guess because like really not that good and i don't know how much of a play it actually sets up to stop my opponent from winning the game however it doesn't mean they can't win it next turn so it makes them work a little bit harder on their following turn and then who knows what we could set up after that i guess because we still have the boss boss line available to us if they don't cheryl next turn so if they do cheryl they actually remove this energy from play I don't hate it. All right, let's go for it. So E switch from here to the Eldegoss. And I'm thinking about trying to keep the switch in the hand. Um, Cause I could Aurora here, but I could also just Viridian Forest away the Aurora. I think I like that a little bit more. And then grab the, I don't even, also don't even want to show him the fighting energy. So we're just gonna grab a dark energy here. And then we're going to retreat and load up. So my opponent can't win next turn. But how much is this going to matter? I don't think a whole ton. <laughs> I don't think it's going to matter a whole ton. But we'll see. 250, so we can't KO this or anything. We do cap at that 220. We have the boss boss game plan set up from here. So we can go boss boss to win the game. Um, we'll see what my opponents got. Like I said, if they do Cheryl this turn, um, they lose this energy. So they don't have a G-Max Rapid Flow set up for the following turn. Uh, and maybe we top deck our research and get to our last e-switch and we can pull off some kind of we get a, a research then we can pull off some kind of our crowbat pull off some kind of zapdos play to remove another energy and then they're down you know three rapid strike energy potentially and they usually play like you know four rapid strike and two what's it called there's the cheryl but they do lose the energy so that's kind of what we're hoping for is like if they go with that and now they're going with the energy assist um I think there's still some hope here. They put it over on that Urshifu. So what do we want to knock out to try and close this out? We could just boss hit this Urshifu, which I think is what I want to go with here. So I'm going to go Viridian Forest away this. Grab Darkness Energy. Hatch. Boss hits? Uh, that sounds pretty good. I could KO to Denna here, but then I don't have a way to follow up on the next turn. So if they could, they could go G Max Rapid Flow. They could go, you know, flow, do some things. They can also just like switch into this one and hit with this one again, though, which sets up the G Max Rapid Flow again for the next turn. And at that point, then we're really looking for the Zapdos play, probably. So yeah, once again, kind of in a bad spot. Um, but if they just hit with this one, if they go G Max Rapid Flow with this, we can knock this out and then boss knock out to win the game. But I have a feeling they're gonna want to try and knock out with this Urshifu V Max. And here comes the Mewtwo. So the Cheryl is gonna make its way back onto the top of the deck. And then make do, play Cheryl, heal, heal this Urshifu VMAX. And then maybe they don't have the energy. I guess we can hope for that. They do have the Viridian Force in play, and they usually play two to three basic energy. So if they have it in the deck, they could just have it right here. They could also go back into energy assist for the turn, which it looks like is what they're going to do. And then they actually put us in range for the KO uh, on the following turn. So there's the hit. Um, four. Now we're down to 150. They have the Rapid Flow set up. We got the Zapdos now. 
we can't remove the energy, unfortunately. So maybe we just go with like retreat, hit with this small trace. Um, I guess that's gonna be fine. Take the prize card and hope maybe taking the prize card is enough here. Maybe I should have just taken the prize card last turn as well. I could have also done that. Fire flame wings. Yeah, I don't see a better play. I mean, they can just hit this one and knock this one out as well. It's just kind of a tough spot, right? All right, we'll knock out the since you know, who knows? Maybe we get a Marnie on the next turn and that is enough to slow them down. I doubt it would be. Uh, and they can definitely win this turn with the Rapid Flow if they play the Passimian or the, the Sight. Well, I guess they can't put the Sight down. If they play the Passimian plus Zigzagoon, they can win this turn. Um, and here come the Goon Pings. So this makes you think, yep, yeah, there's the Passimian. So they got the G-Max Rapid. Or I don't think this wins. No, it does win. Right? They have the, I have the, what's it called as well? Like, I don't think they got it quite yet. But no, the Moltres on the bench will also get knocked out. And yeah, that's the game. So... Another defeat. I didn't win any games. I said how much I enjoyed this deck and I love it. Uh, and I still really like it. I think it's super strong. And I think it definitely is the best way to play ADP right now. Uh, no dubs, but you can't win them all. So uh, still some interesting games. I tried to string together some weird plays in them. It didn't quite work out, but uh, definitely still recommend checking out the deck. And I'll, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.